Hello, welcome to Soul Print Intuitive Tarot. It is November 8th. Um, so, Bloomberg has decided to win the race or enter the race. I don't see that going anywhere. So that's interesting. Um, I want to take a look today at a couple things. Sort of Trump's mental health. And I want to see if we can find out anything about what's going on in the background um, behind closed doors, you know, with lawyers and aides and stuff like are they how are they actually going to handle um, the impeachment inquiry, the public hearings going forward? I mean, you can only distract so much one hopes. So that's my question. That's what I'm looking to find out today. You know, as things have sped up, it is. it feels sometimes like we're revisiting the same uh, question or, the you know, the same angle over and over again. I mean, certainly this is not the first time that I have read on, you know, Trump's mental health. But what's happening or it feels very much like stuff is coming at us so quickly and the, the tides are changing so swiftly now and the energy is moving and so the question now is like how is he coping on a continuing basis this isn't some far off you know boogeyman that might come and get him this is like real and i'm wondering if he has any actual capacity to understand at this point what is real and what um is not apparently he gave a, a you know the one of those press things that he does on the the self one there um earlier today and he was on and on about a perfect phone call and it is a perfect phone call i don't know why people say it's not a perfect phone call and he then was saying you know sondland said that it was perfect and i did nothing wrong and there was no quid pro quo quid pro quo um clearly he had forgotten that the big news yesterday was the fact that Sondland revised his testimony to include the fact that there absolutely not only was there one, but it, you know, he connected Donald Trump to it. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm starting to get a little bit concerned about his, his actual brain function. So that's my question. I want to take a look at um, Trump, how Trump's doing physically and mentally. And I want to take a look at what's going on behind the scenes. If we can access some of that information, come on down. All right, so this thing, one more quick shuffle. And so Trump impeachment plan, Trump impeachment plan. Trump impeachment plan. Because the question is, is there a plan if he doesn't remember or acknowledge that there is a problem? Interesting. Okay. So, here justice sits in the middle of everything, and there is that sense that, you know, for the, I think the average American, for, for everybody but his hard, hardcore base, um, you know, people are really hoping and anticipating that the things that go on in the next two months actually bring justice back to the land you're living in. That is the hope and that is the intention. What is going on, it, it's kind of interesting, is Trump is getting his news from one source, or you know, or not one source, but sources that all speak at with one voice. And so he in some way is, is in such a bubble that it, it's kind of not a wonder that he sounds, you know, like paranoid and, and um, you know, 
detached from reality because I feel that by and large, she really is getting fed a great deal of fake news because that's how they figure they can keep him, you know, calm. And so when something happens where he really gets some pushback, like the booing, it throws him because he can't understand, you know, what is going on. And, and you know, this is a man who spent a lot of his time with ratings and numbers and stuff. And even when the polls aren't showing him in the best light, he seems to somehow be able to uh, just twist it so it works to his advantage. One of the things that he's actually not noticing because he's sort of in this strange little space he's in is the fact that the Republicans have really, really started to pull back. It's not blatant, it's not obvious, and it's not going to be. But very slowly, there's a little bit of a retreat going on here. There's a little bit of a, um, you know, we don't know what to say. We don't know how to defend this. So, you know what, we're just going to run away from the cameras and we're not going to say anything and, and try to, you know, cover our own butts. So that is the strategy. It's not a great strategy, but that's what they have to work with, frankly. Yeah, they really, um, they really are keeping him, he's, they're keeping him surrounded by the people who comfort him, by the people who tell him what he wants to hear, by the people who reassure him that, of course, things are fine and wonderful and perfect. That's it. That's what he gets for communications. I mean, part of the reason that Giuliani was able to convince him of this, like, really, truly insane um, idea about, you know, Ukraine being at the root of the, um, the interference in the 2016 election and going forward. It's, I mean, it is ridiculous. You have a country that is small, that is trying to recover, um, it is at war, you know, recesses are being, resources are being spent all over the place, but yet somehow Trump seems to feel that the biggest thing on their mind is um, making sure that he's in power. I mean, it, it just doesn't even play well. But because he gets his news from such a limited resources, Giuliani was really able to sell him this narrative and about, you know, Ukraine being the bad guy. And so this is what you have, right? You have him being sort of set up for disappointment, but he honestly, I think as this intensifies, he actually gets more and more confused about why people don't love him um, because he sort of slipped into that place where he really is believing his own, you know, press clippings. He, he believes, um, what he believes he holds on very very tightly to that which he thinks um you know looks good looks good on him it really doesn't matter it really doesn't matter anymore what is said to him how they coach it how they present it it doesn't matter he only wants to hear what he wants to hear and he wants people to play the game exactly the way he wants it played. This is part of the reason behind this. Stop, you know, discussing the procedures. You defend me on the merit, buddy. There is no merits with which to defend you. But that's what he wants. Um, there is definitely a lot more confusion. There seems to be some um, dependence or increased dependence on, um, th you know, things that would boost his, his mind, his ego. So in some cases, yeah, this actually might be something that he is ingesting, but it also is his dependence on those people who feed his ego. It is also his, you know, addiction to having to see himself in the, own, the best possible light at all possible times and uh, you know and because that's the place that he stays in of course when there is criticism of him he is just gobsmacked because he can't understand how somebody doesn't love him as much as he loves him i mean it's really ridiculous um so 
again, the more stuff is going to come out. He's it's not it's just not going to be a good situation. You know, I mean, he is not coping. There's a lot of volatility around him and a lot of anger and a lot of literally I'm not listening to you. I'm not absorbing it because I don't like what you're saying and, and literally and you can't make me I'm the president I can hear and believe and think and see whatever I want so yeah so good to know the um, the toddler is in office and um, functioning okay let's take a look at behind the scenes what is going on behind the scenes in terms of fighting or combating the um you know the public hearings Preparations for hearings, preparations for hearings, preparations for hearings. I can tell you that energetically the, um, the Democrats have something very clean that's laid out um, and they have things in place so that information is presented in a very um, sort of linear and clear-cut way. It's going to be very easy to understand the narrative that um, that the narratives want to, sorry, that the Democrats want to pre present. Okay, so behind the scenes, what is going on? Okay, well, the first thing that's going on is there is a great deal of work trying to get Trump, trying to keep him balanced. And you know, Geez, that's just not working. Um, he really does. <laughs> he really does feel like a victim. Okay. He feels like he has been so unfairly persecuted. And as long as he feels that way, of course, his, depos his posture is going to be so incredibly, you know, defensive. Um, it, that news thing that he did this morning, he was not even speaking. He was like shouting his answers. His answers were, you know, aggressive and loud. Um, this is not the behavior of somebody who um, is confident in where they stand. This is somebody who is exhibiting behavior, who believes that they are being picked on, you know, unkindly, unjustly. And he's not going to change his mind. He does not want to see it any different because, frankly, being a victim uh, suits him very, very well. He's not accepting any advice. So the people in the war room are kind of like, okay, all right, wait a minute. We, um, we, this is bad. We know this is bad. Those of us who are actually, you know, lucid understand this is a problem. And we understand that things are gonna come out that are not going to look that good. And so maybe we can try to, you know, tone things down or, or get things under control. And it's like, yeah, he, he doesn't want that and he's not gonna do that. Um, you know, the harder they try to steer him into something that is calm, honestly, the harder he pushes back and retaliates because, again, his communications, his message, his ideas are the best and the brightest. And so if you're offering him something that isn't like 100% in sync with what he already thought, um, it's going to be very difficult to get him to change his mind with regards to this because this isn't sort of, um, you know, person A tells me this, and so that's kind of my current opinion, and then person B tells me this, and oh, wait a minute, maybe I'll, you know, it's not that flip-flop between opinions or people's thoughts. This is his own reaction, right? And so he is very much in that um, defensive posture because he really believes he has been um, victimized. So what's going on behind the scenes is kind of a whole lot of not a lot because every time they try to set a strategy in place, um, Trump opens his mouth and blows it. I think the latest thing they're doing is he's trying to pretend it's not happening, that it's not real. And if we just ignore it, we're not going to give it any validity. Well, that's lovely, except that's just not how it's going to work. 
Um, so ultimately you have a man who is literally set up to be disappointed and sad. And then, you know, when the public hearings are held and the defense is not robust enough, then he's going to be yelling and screaming about how stupid people they are and how competent they are. And, you know, how many more people from the government should he fire because they haven't all protected him? Um, I got to tell you, the strategy coming out of the White House is it's a little bit confused because he's so defensive, there isn't a way to c kind of find that balance, to, right? And so what you end up having is this very kind of mercenary reaction where everything becomes even more transactional, God, God help us all, than it has been, okay? So uh, uh, mm, that's kind of what I see. Okay, I wanna take a look at how this is going to play with um, the citizens. How are people gonna feel about it? How are Democrats and Republicans and independents, how are people from red states and blue states and purple states going to absorb um, what is going on with the public hearings? Like, is there going to be that understanding and clarity going forward of the information presented. So I'm looking at um, overall how the, the public hearings are going to go and how people are going to respond to them. Okay, so um, response to public hearings, response to public hearings, response to public hearings. Okay, well, so this is what we know here. There's going to be a fair amount of sort of attacking what is said, but unless you are completely, completely entrenched in the, you know, Trump bubble, it's going to start raising questions for a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of concern out there because basically the two stories don't match. So, you know, this is the thing. If, if two people are telling a story and one person says, you know, five times that happened and the next person says seven times that happened, well, you can write that off as, you know, confusion, a little bit of lack of clarity, you know, maybe they heard it different or saw it different. What we've got now is a situation where um, they're not even telling the same story. It's like they're reading two different books. And so slowly but surely, people are going to have to start looking at the credibility versus the the... It, what simply doesn't make sense, what is completely illogical. And from this, you can see that the communications are going to have the desired effect, um, which is, it's going to bring down, oh my goodness, how perfect, eh? It's gonna bring down the tower of judgment on him. Bing, bang, boom. So he's not prepared for it. He's really not, we know that already. And his people aren't really prepared for it because they can't get him under control. And so what you have here basically is um, a wicked, wicked change of fortune coming for the guy. Um, and justice has her way. Okay, so um, this is kind of the projection as I see it. I see that the public hearings are going to take, you know, um, some time. It feels to me as if the articles of, of impeachment are going to be voted on um, just a little bit before the Christmas um, break. 
There's going to be some drama, I think, around the budget, but it's not going to turn into a whole lot because people are not going to be prepared to do this year what happened last year. Um, and so it looks like January could very well be the month that, that brings this to a head. So that's what I know now. Thank you very, very much for joining me. Thank you for your support. It is, it is wonderful and very much appreciated. Until next time, take care, be well, and we'll see you really soon. Bye.